I was hanging out on YouTube and looking through some YouTube videos and I found some discussion videos on whether legendaries are bad for Legion or not, whether they are ruining the game, whether they're too OP, or maybe a nice change of pace to the game. But I decided to let's you know take the uh, topic and I'll break it down in this video. First thing I want to say, because I'm a PvP channel, legendaries are fairly useless for PvP, unless you make them somewhat useful in duels. But then you would have to find a way to balance them for duels in particular, so that they are not that OP when it comes to the dueling environment. Otherwise, legendaries don't really do much for you in PvP. They do give a little bit extra stats, but more or less it's not even the stats that they give you, it's more about the item level that they provide. So, without further ado, let's get on to the legendary discussion, and we're going to be talking about it mostly from the PvE perspective. Alright, let's take a look at legendaries and what they do for PvE, and I have a list right here. They might have messed up this game uh, in terms of Legion and the experience of the game in a couple different ways. This is some of the most common ones that people usually refer to. The RNG of legendaries and which ones you get can get to people sometimes. The effects where some effects are obviously better than others for a competitive PvE environment when it comes to say progression rating or being top DPS. The disbalance of PvE via legendary is basically making people think that because you have two people and they're both same item level, if one guy has a legendary compared to the other, the guy with legendary is more likely to get ahead in terms of a guild environment. And I'm not sure that there are many guilds that have been doing this. I remember Method being asked whether they were uh, trying to exclu uh, exclude people if they didn't have specific legendaries to help out the certain fight mechanics. And they at the time stated that they did not. I don't know that many guilds that do. Uh, I know that my guild does not really have any issues in terms of legendaries. We have a lot of people that don't have the best legendaries, but they do have people that are trying to pull as much DPS as humanly possible. So. I'm not sure if that is something that's going on in the background. Also, Blizzard intentions for legendaries, which is something people didn't really like. We'll cover the intentions for legendaries a little bit later down the line. 7.2, they are, however, changing how you acquire legendaries and how they drop. They'll be spec specific, so if you have, let's say, an example of if you have an Alpha Rogue with two legendaries for now, you have the Bracers and the Gloves. And that's the only two legendaries you have. As an Outlaw Rogue, the game will look at you as, okay, so you have two legendaries, your third one will be a little bit difficult to get. Although, I don't know if it's that difficult to be honest. But what the game will do is it will try to have bad luck protection for specific legend. Let's say again, you're an Outlaw. You got bracers, you got the gloves, but you don't have any other legends for assassination or subtlety. You swap to the spec and swap to the gear to be given for that spec specific because then the game will ignore spec-specific legendaries and will look at you as an assassination and be like, oh, you're a clean slate, you're more likely to get a legendary, so your bad luck protection is going to increase. Same goes for every other spec. This does not account for legendaries that are spec, non-spec specific. And there's a lot of them. I have three legendaries that are not spec specific. So every single spec that is going to look at me, it's going to think, you only have three legendaries, it's going to be a while till I get to four. Actually, no, I have, let's say, hold on, no, 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 I have, all of my legendaries are not spec specific. Look at that. I actually am going to have the game look at me and be like, hmm, you don't have any spec specific legendaries there, Dalaran. So, you are going to be less likely to get your sixth, even though that's way too many legendaries at this point, you're less likely to get your sixth legendary because you only have five that are not spec specific. So I'm actually gonna get screwed on that. I had no idea. <laughs> One of the things that people talked about is legendaries and how they change the playstyles altogether. Some are fairly boring, some don't really impact yourself in terms of DPS, but some are straight up literal buffs. These legendaries also compared in a lot of cases to set pieces. And I actually have a couple set pieces that I can take a look at. I wanna take a look at the rogue ones, and then I wanna take a look at the hunter ones just to compare class by class basis, not just, you know, particular it's a rogues. Some people have been stating that a lot of the legendaries have the potential, or could have had the potential, to be part of your four-piece, two-piece bonuses. And some of them are so strong that that four-piece or two-piece bonus could have been more fun just to get from your set pieces of gear, while keeping the legendary bonuses something more menial, something a little bit of above, but not enough to like actually change your playstyle. And take a look at the assassination outlaw and subtlety. The two pieces bonuses for assass, garrote costs are reduced by 25 energy and cooldown are reduced by 12. So you can use garrote a lot more often and spread damage over time on people. So it kind of impacts the idea that you have a lot of single target damage already, 
Here's some capabilities for more AoE-ish concepts. For outlaw pistol shots that are free, give you 10% more crit for 8 seconds. Pretty passive, pretty bland. Two piece for subtlety, similar to death, costs 10 less energy. That means you could prioritize more energy over shadow strikes, but again, pretty bland. The four piece bonus is usually where the game changes, but here it seems that Assassination Garou generates one additional combo point and deals 60% energy. It basically just buffs your Garou. It doesn't actually change your playstyle, compared to some of the legendaries. Uh, four piece for Outlaw, a general rush persists for 15 seconds longer when it ends at half power. So it basically allows you to catch up with your energy and if you have cooldown reduction then you're able to get your adrenal rush back up. I guess it's a little bit more of a playstyle change but that's conditional because of Roll the Bones. 4 piece for subtlety, symbols of death cause your next shadow strikes to critically strike. That is just a nice cake in to the good system already that they have for subtlety. It's just like an extra bonus, it doesn't actually change your playstyle. So, we take a look at the rogue ones, but let's take a look at the hunter ones. The reason I'm taking a look at the hunter ones not in particular is just because that's the, you know, the only other class that I feel like I somewhat understand fairly well in terms of actual playstyle and PvE mechanics. I don't really know the other classes that well in terms of PvE, and I'm not gonna pretend like I do. I mostly know them in PvP, but again, there's like so many things that I keep learning with every single class, even just for PvP, patch after patch. So I'm just gonna stick to my guns and with what I know. For so uh, the pieces for 100 pieces, you have the two pieces for Beast Mastery. Cobra Shot, Multi Shot, Kill Command increases the damage of your Beast Shell Wrath by 1.5% for the main duration. A small buff towards the damage bonus that you already had given, so I guess that one is pretty meh. It's pretty okay, at most. Uh, it's alright, I guess. That's the best I'd really give it uh, for most. It, it's, it's not a massive change. Marksman, aim shot, reduces the caster move the next aim shot by 20% and reduces focus size by 20. I guess it does a little bit of a playstyle change because it does kind of offer you, you know, ability to not have, not pull as much focus in order to get those uh, aim shots back to back and allows you to get a little bit of different timing, but not too much, it's more like convenient. Uh, for survival, Lars Array deals 50% increased damage, which is a bleed, and Flag Strike increases the duration of your Lars Array by 6 seconds. That is pretty cool. Because then allows you to keep large area on target, allows you to change up your rotation just maybe even a little bit in order to give you a, a little bit different experience with the hunter. Four piece bonuses, where it should be big. Cobra Shot, Multi Shot, Kill Command for Beast Master, deal 20% increased damage while Beast of Wrath is active. So, your abilities deal more damage when you burst is up. Whoa, that's such a. You, you're making burst even burst here? Wow, what a big change. Wow, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> 4 piece 4 marksmanship. Casting 2 aim shots in a row causes critical strike damage by 15% per 6 seconds. Passive, I mean crit is fun, but it's like doesn't actually change your playstyle. But then you have one for survival. Mogus Bite consumes 3 seconds of your large rate on your target, instantly dealing 3 seconds worth of the remaining damage. So you basically are forcing those bleeds, kind of like with Exsanguinate for assassination, you're forcing those bleeds to happen right there, 3 seconds worth of bleed. So. That is actually a cool playstyle change because you allow an large rate to be uh, more damage and you can increase the duration with your flanking strikes and you use Mongo's Bites to increase your burst. So that's actually a playstyle change. That's so far out of two classes and six specs that we took a look at, one of them actually has a playstyle change. Now that one is actually I find fairly exciting in my personal opinion. But that's kind of what people are alluding towards is some of the uh, four piece, two piece bonuses are not that exciting when it comes to PvE. But then Legendary is coming with some of the craziest changes. Let's take a look at just one Legendary that changes Outlaw Rogue playstyle altogether. It changes your life. The current Outlaw Rogue uh, set isn't all that exciting. It just provides you a little bit of quality of life things. But with the current Legendary of Bracers, for example, it allows you to not focus on spending as many common points into your run-throughs, but rather focusing and or watching out for you between the eyes and trying to line up procs with your blunderbuss. Because with the Legendary, when you use Five, uh, five combo points on between the eyes, you blunt, your next pistol shot deals a lot more damage. And when you're using your own blunderbuss, which is a proc for a pistol shot, that's even more damage. So you're watching for those free shots, and you're also trying to line up quick draw talent points. So you're going for talent quick draw, you're focusing on between the eyes into blunderbuss procs as much as possible, and using cooldown reduction mechanics not to reduce the defensive or offensive cooldowns, which you still are going for, but you're mostly going there for the between the eyes to reduce the cooldown of that, which is a 20 second cooldown, into a blunderbuss. And you're trying to maximize as many of those as possible throughout the fight. Now this changes your playstyle dynamically. You're doing a whole nother thing with that. So, I feel like just one legendary changes the playstyle of an outlaw rogue so much. 
that a four piece or two piece bonus cannot. And that's what basically people are talking about. So I feel like I listed in this video plenty of examples why people don't like legendaries, but let me give you a few examples of like how some people have been thought of legendaries and how legendaries can be beneficial for you. I don't want to make this video sound negative, I'm just trying to cover if they're good or bad for you. But here are some of the examples of why legendaries could be a nice addition to, uh, to the game for Legion. I know that legendaries in the past have been considered like the sacred item that you had to go through a lot. But the game's change and the idea of legendary is going to be legion-esque in terms of like Diablo-esque. Just probably for this expansion. And Blizzard is just trying new things. Maybe legendaries will go back to being like this sacred thing that only a few people will ever have. And we'll just see how it goes. But here are some examples of why legendaries are not so terrible. First of all, legendaries make a pretty good catch-up mechanic for any alts. So if let's say you have your main character and with a bad luck protection that they applied so many times, it is fairly easy for your alts to get a legendary. For example, every single one of my alts has a legendary. I recently got one for my rogue alt, which I normally never play. I got one on my hunter about one week into playing him, and I got one on my demon hunter alt. And I have a legendary for each one of my alts and five of my main. So I feel like if I'm that lucky in terms of the uh, bad luck protection and the statistics, I feel like the statistics work. But then again, I'm just one person telling you exactly how I perceive it and what happened to me, so your situation might be different, but I feel like they've uh, tried to get the statistics right as best as possible. The chances are you at least will have one legendary. Second thing is, legendaries are always going to be the highest item level in the game, for as far as we know. They give you a massive increase towards your stats when it comes to PvE. For PvP it's a pretty decent item level increase. But the stats that it give you, no matter what legendary it is, whether it's a ring, whether it's a neck, whether it's a back piece, whether it's a cloak, whether it's gloves, boost, whatever, there are always a damage increase. So no matter what the effect is, they still do help you out with your stats. Because honestly, in most cases, I don't really, haven't really seen a situation where a legendary literally carried somebody in terms of the healing, tanking, or damage. Some, a lot of them do increase your damage and healing, but those that do give you a specific playstyle or a change to a playstyle for a higher damage increase are usually a little bit more skillful to play. So a player does need to adjust. So it is still becomes more about skill-based operations and skill-based uh, gameplay rather than just like, you got a legendary, that's it, 500, you, you, you're you always going to be on the recount, 500k DPS at all times, no matter what you do, you can AFK and your guy will be auto attacked for 500k DPS, would be fucking do. Also Blizzard would have talked about a little bit about the ability for legendaries to be swapped out for specific boss fights, and these legendaries, while they do offer you different buffs, they can offer you different playstyles. For example, and the idea of swapping legendaries is actually not a bad one in my opinion, because normally we just wear the gear and don't do anything about it, but I remember the days where people would swap their trinkets, swap some pieces of gear for a little bit different stats, kind of like back in reforging, to be able to allow you to perform in specific situations. For example, let's say your class is really good at single target DPS, but you come into a fight with a boss where you need a lot of AoE. You've already committed a lot of your artifact power and gear for assassination spec, and for you to go to swap to another spec, you'll lose way too much DPS. Legendaries basically allow you to keep playing the spec you're playing and give you some options in terms of how you want to deal damage. So legendaries can help you provide a little bit extra AoE, or and vice versa, a little more single target damage. As an outlaw rogue, I already have enough of AoE damage with blade flurry and how much auto attack damage I already put out in the mastery hits and everything that stacks up on it. So what I'm looking forward to is an alpha rogue is more single target DPS. So I currently have some legendaries that allow me to do a little bit more single target DPS, but it could be a situation where let's say your spec or class is really good at AoE, so you get some legendaries to focus more on single target, or you're really good at single target, so you get a few legendaries and a few town chase, uh, changes to focus more on AoE playstyle. So I feel like uh, for this case alone, legendaries do allow you for a little bit of customizability for your class and your spec based on specific fights that are coming out in the game. So. I don't think that's terrible. I actually kind of like the idea because normally we just wear the gear and we don't really do anything with it and it's really up to our class and normally we would change specs based on different fights. Well Legend is supposed to give you like this medium so you, you don't really need to change your whole spec altogether in order to perform well in another fight and it kind of uh, like to give you like a little bit of a, I guess uh, a little bit of a safety mat. So you're not really falling too hard in terms of your DPS loss when it comes to from single target to a massive AoE. And they're supposed to uh, allow you to cushion your fall a little bit here and there. So I do think that legendaries do offer some good ideas, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think legendaries really are ruining the game and making it not that fun, too RNG specific and 
making the game feel like it's just RNG mess. Everything is just random luck. Or do you think the legendaries actually are the way that they are are not a terrible system and are making the game in some cases a little bit more fun, somewhat unique, and a little bit interesting? Let me know all that, guys, in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next video.